you enjoy. A quick thank you to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Dark Machine, Try Again 95, Astray the Dreamer, Mezik, Budic Joel, German Chemist, Casper Arnholtz, and Chaos to Must. Thank you very much. The Three Words, written by Slow Ad 2584. The Ariat fleet was in war of Earth. They were in communication with the world leaders discussing the terms of surrender and demilitarization. The terms were extremely harsh. The fledgling human star empire would be unable to endure under these terms. It was looking bleak. By these terms, the majority of humans would simply starve. The world leader sat with his head in his hands, then spoke the three words, and reached for his special, traditionally red phone. The Arid Admiral, upon hearing the three words spoken with true conviction, held up his hand. Wait, uh, human leader of Earth, uh, let us reconvene and discuss more favorable terms. And just like that, the deals all changed. The terms were more reasonable. The human empire would survive. At the Galactic Council, some members were greatly confused by this. They wanted to know just what the feck happened to change the terms. This was the nearest that they had ever come to putting the humans down. The majority of the Council understood what had happened, and what was just avoided. Apparently, some of the Council members had not been briefed in this, so the presentation was prepared. The Three Words History revealed the three words that, when spoken by a human in dire situation, soon resulted in terrifying things to observe. A great cost in the annals of history, we of the Galactic Council have discovered that when the three words are ever spoken with 100% true conviction, it is to be better for all immediately to cease all hostilities and sue for peace. Otherwise, well, damn... As the humans say, some case studies in historical archives shall demonstrate. Death of Brut Species World 118-F The Brut World was found with everyone on it dead. Upon investigation, the honor debt implants in all of their necks had been activated. This led to inspection of the execution arena, where an appalling sight was found. The button had been successfully actually pushed. Something that has never occurred in the millions years of the execution trials. Some back info is required. For those not familiar with the Brut culture, in their core beliefs, every enemy or criminal is afforded a chance, even in defeat, even in execution. So when an enemy warrior was to be executed, he needed to have a chance to win offered to him. This right judgment was originally meant to show how the gods really judged the two sides, but later evolved to a basic Brut right. On Colony World 118-F, this was the execution arena, mixing public entertainment blood sport with summary execution deeds all in one. It was an open coliseum, roughly 100 meters long, in an open, sandy oval. The warrior to be executed entered from one end of the oval. The button was on the far end. The warrior was to be gunned down, but if he could make it to the button and push it, as was his right, it would kill everyone on the world by activating the honor dead implants. That was just how the brat sense of honor worked. The scene in the Colosseum was uh, gory. A human soldier was being executed, apparently, and recording the vices in the building did record the invocation of the three words before he walked out into the arena. Footprints marked out serpentine sprint the human took at first, but blood splatters and spray in the sand indicated that he was being shot several times. By the 50-meter spot in the arena, the footprints were a direct, limping pace, and the blood splatters increased in volume. At the 60-meter mark, a severed left arm from the elbow down lay in the sand. Now, the blood trail increased in concentration under the advancing human path as he continued on and bled out. At the 70-meter, the apparent gunfire grew more frantic, as seen by bullet strikes in the sand. The brut was starting to get alarmed. The human had been struck by gunfire an estimated 120 times now, and should have dropped long ago. At 85 meters, the legs and hips of the human lay in the sand. His spine had been shattered, and his body separated at the abdomen. 
A solid streak of blood continued the 15 meters to the far end. Up the two steps, and a gory, mostly shredded and exposed skeletal remains of a dead human lay on the dais, bloody chin pressed on the button. An odd smile locked in the death rictus on what was left of his face. Bodies of Brut lay in the sandy arena, apparently in desperate rush to physically keep the human from pushing the button. But they were apparently too late. It seems the loss of half of the human's body only allowed him to speed up his scramble. It is appalling the state the human was in as he pushed the button. Skull, one-third blown away, right arm riddled with exposed bone and tendons, left arm a sandy raw stump at the elbow. Half an exposed ribcage, no lungs, no heart, vital organs left behind with the legs. How he made the last 15 meters under intense gunfire, with just the blood oxygenation remaining in his muscles and brain, and adrenaline, is astounding. It was the three words, a perfect example of the terrible resolve that results afterwards. Case Study Fleet Action at Wolf 359 The Human Task Force was in ruins. The Kree Armada had surrounded them and unclassed them. The dampening fields in the Kree enveloped the human fleet. It meant that there was no hyperspace or subspace escape. They were doomed. The Kree admirably were gloating, describing in detail how they were going to board the ships and luxuriously hunt and feast upon the humans. They go to Earth in the nearby Sol and continue the hunt and feast upon the entire world. The human ships were all flaming ruin as the Kree fleet approached to begin boarding operations. Each and every ship was recording, transmitting the three words to each other, seemingly in agreement. Then the unthinkable happened. As the Kree battlecruisers got close to locked boarding clamps, the supposedly disabled ships came to life, using previously unknown battleshot and suicide overload protocols in the central combat centers. Laser batteries burned themselves out in 3,000% overcharge final continuous shots, suddenly arcing out and blasting as many enemy ships as possible before blowing power couplings all throughout their ships. Gyros were overloaded and overridden to Max Yor, and the ships bodily tumbled and slammed into the Kree vessels. Airlocks blew and reactors detonated to propel human ships to simply ram Kree battle carriers. Other human ships set off their torpedo magazines to annihilate themselves and nearby vessels tried to board. The humans all died. All ships were destroyed. But by the time the chaos was over, the Kree Armada was in no shape to continue to sol. It was a humiliating turn of fortune, and the Admiralty wound up being the feast when they returned to Port Shame. Commonality in all instances, the three words. The Unknown Gunman of Tombstone Colony In the capital human city on the world of New Utah, there is a huge silver statue of the Unknown Gunman, some unnamed warrior leaning on a squad support automatic weapon jammed in the ground like a crutch. On the pedestal under the silver statue is engraved the unknown gunman, and in quotes, his final words, the three words. The colony town of Tombstone was a fledgling foothold on the world to become New Utah, at a time when the ownership of the world was still very much in military dispute. Druck raiders, who loved to pillage and raid during such times of chaos, had tore into the small outpost town on their raiding hoverbikes, seeking to smash and grab the defenseless town while they were still weak. The town was on fire. It was looking bleak. Many were dead. Druck raiders were already looting homes and storages, stripping parts of vehicles and such. When the unknown gunman walked out of the gun store, wielding a squad support automatic weapon, belt fed, with ammo belt draped over his shoulders. The gun still had a price tag flapping in the wind as it began to open fire in the middle of the town's single street. The druck were surprised at first at the accuracy and effectiveness of the fire of fire the unknown gunman put out from his hip, and several fell immediately. The remainder of the druck raiders whooped and cheered and raced around on their hoverbikes, shooting and slashing at the unknown gunman. Thinking this was a surprise chance for a bit more fun. The gunman took many shots and slashes that should have killed him outright, but like a robot, he still accurately gunned down the drug, 
as if the attacks on his body didn't matter in the slightest. The truck were gunned down left and right, and as they fled the town in a slowly realized panic, the unknown gunman limped to the opening between the buildings and stitched a line of constant fire up the distant sandy slope where the hover bikes were zigzagging away. The stitched puffs of sand traced its way up the slope, intersecting each bike in sparking and exploding devastation. The barrel of the brand new gun was glowing and nearing failure as it tagged the final biker that almost got away at the top of the ridge. The unknown gunman had killed every single one of the raiders, single-handedly. Without saying a word, he jammed the barrel of the gun into the hissing sand, propped his broken and sliced body up like a crutch, and only then allowed himself to die. Afterwards, the gun store owner was asked who the man was. The store owner said that he never got his name, only saw him once or twice living on the street, begging for change in food. The guy just asked simply to borrow the expensive gun and all the ammo he could carry. As the raiders were mid-firestorm at the time, the store owner considered it a fair deal. The store owner stated that the man said the three words with a tired sadness and wrecked the gun absentmindedly like a pro before walking outside and opening fire. As you can see, it's the three words. Commonly invoked in every single instance, they seem to trigger an endurance, an unstoppable commitment, a strength of will, a most terrible resolve, like a pact with some demon of myth. Some sort of death pact that seems to be an, okay, let me just do this before I die, sort of arrangement. And as seen above, it seems to work. We, the Galactic Council, advise great caution when in conflict with the humans, as can be seen. The three words can by themselves reverse a military outcome. The Council also advises not letting the humans know that we have discovered the three words. We wouldn't want them to use this to their advantage. Provide biometric authorization clearance to view the three words below. Well, fuck it. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope 